Well, the reasons given for going into Libya are not, strictly speaking, uh, the words responsibility to protect. As I understand it, Canada says we went into Libya to protect citizens from <coughs> its own government. Uh, I'm not so sure whether it resorted to the R2P designation, but um, the result seems to be quite similar. Um, as far as I can tell, it accomplished pretty much what R2P would have wanted. Um, the aftermath is going to be intriguing. Um, also, because the questions will begin to be raised, did we actually go in to protect them, or did we go in to protect our access to a resource they've got that we need? Because uh, it seems to me there are some states out there that you will hear an argument, we should be in as well, but they don't have as attractive a resource as oil mm -hmm. in uh, Libya. Uh, that's an argument for others to sort out, but that's also one looming over this particular debate. R2P is not the default position of the media when it goes into a conflict zone. Mm -hmm. We don't go in as reporters going, hmm, how, to, how does R2P apply here and why isn't it being applied and shouldn't that be the case we make? Uh -huh. That's not what we go in to do. That's not our problem. That's not our charge. Mm -hmm. That's up to advocates like the organizations that appear here. We don't go in thinking, how do we advance the cause of responsibility to protect? We go in with a journalistic mandate. They're two completely different things. Whether or not intervention diplomatically or militarily is a solution, isn't what concerns reporters on the ground when they're watching conflict unfold in front of them. Quite a, quite a different thing. Well, I'm sure that co-opting is underway now. We heard in the previous panel that it's very much in use in parts of the Middle East by various governments trying to make sure that there's competing voices with those who appear to be more rebellious. The thing I like about the prospect of using social media in countries in conflict is that you can activate opposition within the country, within the units, within the military that may be doing the persecuting. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me in countries like Syria you hear the argument, which I repeat here, that the only ones who are going to successfully overcome the administration there mm -hmm. uh, are only going to do it if they can manage to persuade the military that it's in its own best interest to do so. That's an intriguing use of, of uh, social media to me. At the same time, Assad's people will be advancing counter-arguments using different guys is on the, the Twitter tweet system and in Facebook, we have to wait and see who wins. But I like the idea that maybe it's a way of mobilizing uh, a military against its own instead of becoming the tool of it.